Oh, hello, hello and welcome back to Will and Hearted. Um, I hope your year has got off to a good start. Um, ours has been noticeably unpredictable and a bit of a challenge. Um, a variety of circumstances have conspired to mean that it's been possible for me to film. It's been impossible for me to film really until now combination of really bad weather, um, stomach flu for the whole family and then Covid. Covid has finally arrived in our local area um, and although touch wood for the moment we're unaffected, um, my son's schooling has been quite disrupted the last three weeks so um, there's been a lot of time spent at home, a lot of time shut up in the house. Um, so yeah, it's been difficult to find the daylight hours and the quiet in order to film. Um, but I'm going to give it a go this afternoon. We'll see um, see how far I get um, before I'm interrupted. But yeah, it's really nice to be sat back in front of the camera. Um, I've got lots to show you, lots to talk about. I've been quite busy creatively the last three weeks since we last spoke. Um, and yeah, I've just been finding, um, going back to my knitting, getting started on um, some other creative projects and also spinning um, has been really helping me get through these last few weeks which have been quite a challenge uh, physically and mentally. So um, I'm really grateful to have handcraft again in my life um, and yeah, I'm just excited to show you what I've been up to. Um, I've been working on quite a few different projects uh, for various babies that have either been born in the last year, uh, well, the last six months or about to be born. Um, a couple have been born over the Christmas period. So um, what I thought I would do is um, do a specific episode just on the baby knits that I've been working on recently because I know um, it doesn't interest everyone to see baby knitting and also um, it, I'm quite sensitive to the fact that it can um, be difficult for some people to watch so um, I'll do a specific episode in the next couple of days um, before I send things off or take them to visit new recipients um, because I've been really finding um, working on some baby knitting to be really boosting um, there's obviously something quite um, quite uh, satisfying about knitting really small things for small people so um, yeah, but the other project that has been fueling me this last month of January so far has been socks. Um, in the past, I don't really know why, but I've sort of naturally knit a pair of socks around New Year. Um, I was looking back to my old blog a couple of weeks ago and it was quite fun to find some pictures of some socks I'd knitted um, in 2014 and then also um, a, a photo of a pair I'd been working on in the final year of uni which for me was 10 years ago so um, I don't know there must be something about new year and socks for me um, but yeah at the end of last year I um, felt this desire to cast on some socks again and that was partly because um, when I had visited the Sheep and Wool Festival back in the start of December, which I haven't yet told you about properly, I never got round to talking about it in Vlogmas, but I promise I will record an episode very, very soon, because mainly because I want to start using some of the things I came home with. Um, but one of the things I purchased whilst I was there was I visited the stall of our local spinning mill, which is about an hour and a half away, situated in Ariège, which are the mountains further to the east, towards the Mediterranean, um, but still within the central Pyrenees. And there there is a spinning mill, which I have had the great pleasure of visiting um, in person eight years ago, I think, when I was pregnant with my son. And 
it's been a process from when I visited eight years ago until now for the spinning mill to change hands and for a new team of young associates to come in and take over the mill. So it was really exciting to meet some of the new team because I knew some of the old team who had the original project of taking over the mill um, but that original team has kind of disbanded and there's now a new team moved in and it sounds as if they're really on the verge of being up and running so that's really really exciting and one of the products that they were selling on their stool was um, socks so I bought myself a pair of lovely 100% wool socks now these are machine knitted but they were machine knitted locally and they're knitted from yarn that was spun in the mill and the mill being based in Ayege the majority of the wool that they deal with is from the Taesquanez local breed which is um, a very popular um, sheep breed all across the Pyrenees and sort of quite far up in the southwest it's a mountain breed and it originates from Ayege, very close to where the fibre mill is, um, which is the town of Tarascon, or well, I suppose really the, the area around Tarascon. Uh, and the, the fibre mill of New is just up the valley towards the mountains from Tarascon. So they naturally have quite a lot of that wool um, that they process. And so these are knit on the machine from that wool and I just found it really really inspiring to find this pair of socks because it's the first time I've seen such a thick pair of socks um, sort of commercially knitted and they just made me think oh I want to knit some really thick socks of my own so I have a lot of wool from the mill um, from when I visited eight years ago because they were offering um, visitors quite an interesting discount so I came back with quite a lot of wool uh, the time, some spinning fibre and also some knitting yarn. Uh, this pair of socks, they really inspired me. I would say this was knit from a heavy DK or like worsted weight. They're pretty thick. Um, and so it got me reaching into my stash for a very precious skein of yarn, which is, uh, I don't have any left because I have the finished object on my lap but it's the grey equivalent of the white origin yarn by rain cloud and sage so i bought the um the grey and the white on the very first i was going to say shop update but it was the opening so this comes from 2017 so this is the original origin yarn that ruth produced um, and I bought one skein of the grey and then I think four skeins of the white. So the white is currently being knitted into a homestead shawl by Melody Hoffman. Um, it's kind of stalled a little bit because I got a bit stuck on the pattern. So I may unravel and either start again or turn in something else. But that was always going to be a shawl. And... The grey was always going to be socks, and finally, it has become socks. <laughs> so, it's a DK weight yarn, 100 grams, 200 metres. I did a very short cuff, mainly because I prefer a short cuff um, to my socks. And I have about that much yarn left. I don't know where the little ball has gone. Um, but that was all I had left. And I casted these on, I think, on New Year's Eve or the 1st of January. I can't quite remember now. And I knitted them ever so quickly. Um, I finished them last Wednesday, cast them off last Wednesday. So in about two weeks it took me to knit. Um, the very first one I finished very quickly, um, but I did the final show, sh toe shaping in the car on the way home from somewhere. And it was a bit impossible to properly measure my foot. So um, I ended up making it a little bit too short. So I unraveled the toe and once I had knitted the second one to the same stage, I did 
the show shape uh, the toe shaping again and they've ended up being exactly the right fit for my feet and I can't get over how beautifully they fit they're knitted on size three millimeter needles um, which has made for a really lovely um, sort of quite thick um, robust fabric and they're so so warm um, I've worn them every day, all day, since last week, um, so I won't show you the sole because it's already a little bit dirty, but it's shaping up pretty well. There's minimal pilling and it's just slightly starting to felt, which I love. Um, and yeah, I'm going to be really excited to see how these hold up over the coming year. And in case you're wondering what the little white line is for, it's just a little bit of scrap yarn that I put on the sock because I knitted them one by one and it was just to make sure that when I did the measuring for the toe that the second sock was going to be the right length. Um, but I actually quite like it and I might just keep it because it's sort of a bit quirky. Um, I've always knitted socks two at a time even like a long time ago when I started knitting socks when I was about 14 13 or 14 um, I used to knit um, sort of the ribbing and then the cuff and then I would do the second one um, and then I'd do the heel flap and then do the second one and then turn the heel um, I had this thing of I used to gather like all my little scraps together they were sort of scrappy socks um, which at the time it would have just been acrylic um, because that was all I had, so I used to just be given loads of acrylic yarn by old ladies, um, mainly my grandma's friends, and I sometimes would find stuff in charity shops. Um, but what I used to love to do was to use the same coloured yarns, but do different stripes so that they looked completely different. Um, and I used to just find that quite fun to knit. So I've never actually had, um, suffered with second sock syndrome, because I've always found just that socks are really fun to knit. Um, obviously I've not done that with these, these are just plain grey but I don't know, my <laughs> boredom levels have uh, significantly decreased I suppose as an adult and I just found these really really relaxing and um, yeah just love them. So the pattern is um, the basic DK weight sock pattern by Church Mouse Knits Yarns, I think, or something like that. Um, the pattern's great because um, you get two patterns in one. You get a pattern for fingering weights and a pattern for DK weights. And if you've never knit socks before, I would thoroughly, thoroughly recommend um, you to use that pattern. It's really easy to follow, really easy to understand. It is written for um, knitting on four double pointed needles um, but if you're sort of able to, it only really matters when you do the instep decrease, um, if you're able to sort of just transfer it onto a double, uh, onto a circular needle it's really easy to do um, and the next time I use the pattern um, I'm going to try and do two at a time which is something I learned to do a couple of years ago. Um, I think it was Mina, the knitting expat, has this really fantastic tutorial on her YouTube channel and I think she has a matching pattern as well on Ravelry which I've never used but just following her tutorial um, taught me how to do two at a time and I again I found that a really manageable way of knitting socks um, partly for managing the yarn if you're worried that you're not going to have enough and also just for making sure that your socks match it's a little bit like with sleeves um that's probably just the thing that worries me about sock knitting is just making sure that they're the same so um yeah so i'm really excited to start the year off with a pair of socks um also because i think it was at the end of november or beginning of december i heard melody of mandarins talking about the natural sock along which is this um, project to encourage folks to use um, non-nylon, non-superwash yarns to knit socks with. Um, I don't actually have either of those things in my stash as far as I can think. 
maybe got one ball of sock yarn um yeah i think i have one ball from west yorkshire spinners that i picked up when i was back visiting my parents um but I didn't buy it for socks, I actually bought it for a shawl project because I just fell in love with the colour. It's like a pistachio green colour. Um, but I don't think I'll ever knit it into socks for finish. Um, I think it's actually going to become a baby garment um, eventually. Maybe a bonnet or something for, for a friend's baby who um, doesn't want the pure wool um, and wants it to be machine washable. So... Um, but yeah, so the idea is to just go into your stash or, or find some um, some natural wool um, yarns and then knit them in socks. And that really appeals to me because that's the yarn I have in my stash. And um, But I don't have any wools that I would sort of say are specifically sock yarn in the sense that they're... I think nearly all my yarn um, in my stash is woolen spun. Um, so obviously, um, well, I think worsted spun lends itself more naturally to knitting socks because the worsted draw and the worsted fibre preparation should make the yarn a little bit more durable. Um, but yeah, I, I'm just curious to see. I'm not really too worried about these wearing out and me doing darning. Um, I find anyway with um, commercial socks that I have that have a little bit of nylon in, you know, the wool wears away. For me, it's sort of on the ball of the foot and on the heel. And you're left with a kind of lacy fabric of the nylon. And to me, that's not really any different than a whole. Um, I don't find that particularly easy to darn, for example. So um, I'll be quite happy to see how these fare up and at what point I need to um, do some darning. And it is really one of my goals this year as well to properly learn how to darn. Um, I have sort of tried in the past, but not really managed very satisfactorily. So I'm gonna do my best. I'm gonna just put these on because my feet are a little bit cold. So I already was intending to do some sock knitting and then I discovered that Carrie of the My Wool Mitten podcast and Instagram account, um, Carrie's based in the US and I've kind of known her <laughs> through the internet for quite a few years because we were paired up as um, swap uh friends a few years ago so carrie very kindly sent me a lovely package of um yarn and wool from her flock of sheep um so if you watch her youtube channel you'll see her lovely sheep and she launched um on this staff day which is the day following epiphany so the 7th of january um a spin along and the spin along is to specifically spin yarn to then knit into socks so um yeah i had been hoping at the end of last year to return spinning after about a year and a half's break um since we moved into this house i just didn't do any spinning at all uh, mainly because everything was sort of packed away it was all in another room um down the end of the house um we swapped bedrooms so our bedroom was here and my sort of workspace was down there but I never went in that room because it was just really cold and we didn't heat it and um, not not great lights, it's perfect for sleeping in um, but not a very pleasant room to, to be in um, and now um, we have two stories in our house um, it's just a bit of a faff for me to take the wheel up and down in the evening for example to spin so my wheel has been waiting very patiently um, in the corner and my spindles are somewhere in the mass of boxes that are on the shelves behind me I haven't yet properly unpacked and tidied up so I can even get my spindle out which is what I probably would have done if I'd had the inclination but I just needed a break uh, okay we're back um, I just needed a break from spinning and I think it's good just to have breaks from time to time um but yeah so i in the last week i got my wheel out again in the evenings um she probably 
needs a little bit of a spring clean. Um, she's a little bit squeaky, so she needs a bit of an oil, a little bit of TLC. But I can't find my spinning oil. Again, it's somewhere very safe in the boxes. Um, so for the time being, uh, I have to just close the door. <laughs> it doesn't bother me. Um, but I wouldn't, for example, show you... I would really like to sit and spin and talk to you, um, but it would just be too noisy at the moment. So once she's had a little bit of an MOT, I will do that. Um, but yeah, I've, I pulled some fibre um, out of my fibre box and um, just picked some yarn, some fibre that spoke to me. Um, I've got a fairly large stash. Well, I say fairly, it's smaller than I thought it was because um, I have actually been spinning a little bit in the last few years with it. Um, but I have a selection of 100 gram bumps of combed top which I bought from two sources in the UK when I was last over three years ago. So some comes from World of Wool and some comes from John Arb and Textiles and uh, when I bought them the intention was to um, practice my woolen, uh, sorry my worsted draw because I'm primarily a woolen spinner. Um, I began my spinning journey by working with fleeces that I sourced within a 10 kilometer radius around me. Um, I began by doing carded prep um, partly because that was just what came more naturally and then I realised after that that was the most appropriate method of dealing with that fibre. So I learnt how to worst, uh, sorry, how to woolen spin first um, and then about four years ago I felt the need um, to sort of expand my spinning skills um, beyond the woolen draw, so to learn the worsted draw and also beyond the um, the sort of the primary three breeds of sheep that I was working with from my local area. So I purchased some worsted top because at the time it felt easier and more accessible for me to buy some prepared, commercially prepared fibre. I would quite like at some point to own my own set of wool combs. Um, I think at the time two reasons stopped me from doing that. First was just the price as they're quite considerably more expensive than hand cards. Um, obviously, as I said, the wool fleece around me doesn't really lend itself to being prepared in that way, but I think you could, but traditionally it's not prepared in that way. And then also the very sort of practical aspect is that I have one, now two small children at home and I just don't like the thought of having such a dangerous instrument around with them at the moment. I think when they're older it'll be fine. Um, obviously I would keep them in a box up on a high shelf or whatever but I don't know I just would be frightened about having such a pointy dangerous object around the house so um, yeah it just seemed like a good idea to me to buy some comb top and because I buy um, undyed sort of breed specific <coughs> wool is actually really reasonable uh, in terms of price. So this is an example of some grey Suffolk top that I just pulled out just to show you. I've forgotten I had this. So there's about five metres of combed top for to 100 grams. I think 100 grams is about four ounces. And I think this cost me something like between two to four pounds. Um, so when you think um, just for practicing spinning that's really good and if the finished yarn or I didn't feel intimidated when I first bought it because I felt quite nervous about doing worsted draw at first um, you know the fiber management is quite different and it's it's a little bit scary <laughs> when you're used to spinning in a specific way but I felt quite happy to sort of waste wool in the sense that you know I wasn't wasting um, 
I wasn't going to ruin a very expensive hand painted um, uh, bum for fiber um, but the other advantage is if it's a success then I've got yarn to knit something that really hasn't cost very much at all and it also allowed me to try you know loads of different types of um, fleece and different types of wool and sheep breeds that I just wouldn't have access to otherwise. And what I have really enjoyed in the last couple of years, um, when I did start using it, was just it, it really gave me an introduction to each sheep breed and to really just be able to explore the fibre with my fingers. Um, most of my spending knowledge has been built up over the years through primarily reading um, a few audio and a few uh, video podcasts as well or kind of spinning um, content that people put out but the majority of the information available to me is on uh, breeds originating originally from the United Kingdom which you know being British that's really interesting for me and that's part of my kind of fibre heritage I suppose and I've really enjoyed getting to know about those different breeds and those different sheep and the traditions associated with them but that's not the wool that's available to me locally in France and although I do have a couple of books about French sheep or French wool the information is very limited because it's not information that's aimed at hand spinners or aimed at hand knitters um, it's mainly aimed at farmers or kind of wool workers in general so felt as well as weaving as well as spinning um, and so what I found really useful is to get some wool in my hands that I can then read about um, like from um, uh, there's a few books that I really go to um, to get my information and then sort of compare what's in my fingers to what I then have to hand um, from local fleece for example just under my desk is some fleece I scoured last week so this is a local to me sheep breed, the Lourdes. Um, and yeah, I've been able to sort of just start to make my own interpretations of this fleece with that bit of knowledge that I've, the kind of the, the vocabulary and the way of describing the fibres and kind of how I've noticed um, the fibre has responded to me spinning or when I've then washed it or when I've knitted with it. Um, I just find it really, really helpful to have that approach. So um, yeah, I'm gonna just continue with my exploration um, of wool through spinning and knitting this coming year because I primarily, even in my commercial yarn, anything I have from the UK is all breed specific, um, mainly from Blacker Yarns, um, again sort of seven years ago I think I ordered quite a few um, breed specific balls of yarn which at the time they had quite a good range, it doesn't appear to be the case at the moment, um, which I don't know if that's due to the pandemic or just because the, the business has been taken over by some new people, um, but yeah I just I'm just really excited um, for this coming year to just really fully dive back into kind of wool work, so really working fully with my hands um, through spinning, then through knitting. Um, I'd love to do a little bit of felting, a little bit of weaving as well this year. Um, I just want to take a break from uh, what Woolen Hut has been primarily for good few years since 2017 um, which was I kind of orientated it towards making mohair teddy bears and um, just at the moment that's not something I want to return to um, for a variety of reasons mainly which are to do with my health um, to do with um, just the practicalities I don't have Oh, it's very rare for me to have time like now in daylight in order to work um, and just it's very tiring and very time consuming and very kind of focused and it just doesn't really fit into family life or or um, 
on my health at the moment so I'm just really excited to return to some crafts which have always been really important to me particularly spinning um, and which sort of I have maintained over the years but they've kind of taken a back seat to the bear making um, and yeah I just feel like there's so much more that I want to explore I want to return to my books I want to return to my kind of wool studies as it were because it's all feeling a little bit rusty at the moment um, all the kind of theory behind yarn production and all my knowledge even about sheep and wool um, it is all very very rusty um, but yeah I just want to to just immerse myself in that again because it is much more manageable um, around daily life. I can sit and knit while the children are playing now. Um, my my children are sort of getting to the age where not I can't sit for hours, but I can sort of do little ten minute bursts during the day, and then in the evening when I'm feeling a bit tired. Um, I can still sit and knit for a couple of hours and you know still be spending time with my husband I'm not kind of shut away in this room um, sort of focused on a really tiny very complicated project so um, and I was in the middle of talking about some yarn that I'd spun and I'm sorry for the big tangent I'm gonna just quickly show you the yarn and then I'm gonna sign off so I this week have spun two hundred grams gains of silk yarn. The first is some naturally grey Jacob. And the second is some naturally white Exmoor horn. So the fibre for these both came from John Arben in Devon and I believe the fibre for this came from Exmoor. The name suggests that it's come from Devon so I'm not sure where the Jacob came from. Unfortunately they don't give you details like that on the website um, but I know it's come from the UK. And my intention was to spare, spin a DK weight and this has ended up being a little bit thicker. So I probably call that a light worsted or a heavy DK. So it's much thicker, for example, than the rain cloud and sage. So I'll say quite heavy, um, which I'm assuming is the fibre prep and the spinning technique. Um, as I said, I'm a little bit rusty with my spinning terminology, but I know it's probably something to do with the grist. I need to look that up again. But it doesn't matter because I was intending that I was going to knit these two together. So this is going to become a pair of striped socks, which I'm rather excited about. So hopefully I'm going to get this on my needles over the weekend. I did toy with the idea of applying it together, but I did a very small um, sample just at the start and I didn't really like what it looked like. The the grey is very beautiful, like it's very steely, cold grey um, in comparison to the Suffolk, for example. I think that would work really well um, applied with a white. So I'm going to maybe keep that and try and spin a little bit um, thinner singles. Um, so that's my first spinning project completed for the year. And then the second I began last night. So this is what's left of, <clears throat> again, a hundred gram bump of top. And this is Herdwick. And Herdwick is a mountain sheep from the Lake District in the north west of England. And I've always wanted to work with Herdwick because um, I had heard it's very coarse, very durable, very kempy fibre, and so far all of all of that reputation is proving to be true. Um, but it really reminds me, going back to what I was saying earlier, of some of our local sheep breeds. So 
and I always knew that this fiber was going to become socks so again it was just perfect timing um, so I spun 50 grams of it up last night still on my nidgy noddy again it's come out a little bit thicker than I intended I need to just practice um, making my singles I was worried that I was going to make them far too thin and then I would end up with a fingering weight yarn which is not what I wanted but unfortunately I think I have ended up with um, with something a little bit thicker than I wanted and I say thicker because I think I, again I'm going to have to combine this with a white um, because I'm not going to have enough for 50 grams I've only ended up with about 50 meters which isn't really enough um, for a pair of socks um, as I said these rain cloud and sage ones were 200 meters for 200 grams so um, yeah I've got to think of an appropriate um, fiber to spin with this or um, I could just order some more Herdwick um, and then spin a second skein so we shall see but that's where I am right now at the start of January um, I'll hopefully film another podcast special um, about baby knitting before the end of the month and then who knows perhaps in February things will calm down a little bit and I'll be able to start doing weekly vlogs as I had intended um, but yeah I apologize if this one's a bit long and rambly um, it's my third attempt filming it so finally I've got some time to film it in the day and hopefully um, you found it interesting and um, I look forward to seeing you again really soon with some new projects on my needles gosh look how hairy that is <laughs> oh, I don't want to see those guard hairs it's very very coarse it's funny it doesn't feel too scratchy though I'm definitely not in the the top but yeah very 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 hairy yarn <laughs> right see you again very soon <laughs> take care Bye-bye.